Placing patients, the principle is we put the patients we know are positive together and we put the suspected together until we get the test results, which unfortunately are taking two to three days, which is not good. Uh, and uh, we, we try and put patients together who've been tested on the same day. Uh, so they're separate. You know, if somebody's coughing a lot, you could put the privacy curtain between them and the next patient just to try and minimize droplet exposure, but there won't be a lot anyway because it's a couple of meters. Staff assigned to COVID designated areas should not care for other patients, and that's the people working a lot with patients, not somebody going in to, like a phlebotomist or something like that. There's no problem with people going and doing that with the, with the PPE. It's just like flu from that point of view. Staff members working in COVID areas, if they, you know, they'll be wearing the PPE for patients, so there's no point in them going, there's no problem with them going in their uniform or their scrubs to the, to the restaurant because they've been wearing the PPE while they've been dealing with the patients. Okay? They were just like any other member of staff who could be nursing a patient with infection on their wards. Okay? There's still flu around on the wards. Those nurses can go to the canteen, or sorry, staff restaurant. Uh, so there's no problem with that because they've been wearing the PPE. And the people in the cohort areas are highly skilled at wearing the PPE. No issue with that at all. Uh, as usual, we need to change our gloves and aprons between patients anyway because we don't want to transmit other bugs around and we must decontaminate our hands between patients. If you have COVID uh, or you have symptoms like a fever and cough, don't come to work. Let your manager know. Self-isolate for seven days from the onset of symptoms. If they get worse, contact NHS 1191, obviously. If you're at high risk of complications, then risk assess with your manager. Don't just not come in, but talk to your manager about it, and they may be able to deploy you to somewhere where you can help because we need all the help we can get at the moment. And testing at the moment, we're just doing infection at the moment, which means people need symptoms, okay? And we're not doing contact testing because if I'm positive and I move out and I test the person in the next bed and they're incubating, they'll test negative. So there's no point. It's a waste of a test. If you're a staff member and you just looked after someone, I want a test, it'll be negative. You might be incubating it but we wouldn't get, we wouldn't get a, a, a positive on you. So that could give you false assurance because if I'm five to seven days, you've just got a bit of a cough, minimal symptoms like most people, you could think, oh, I'm fine, I haven't got a temperature, <coughs> and you could be transmitting it. So that's important. But the antibody test will change because that will tell us how many people actually had the infection in the past. Just a bit about maternity because we're on this site. I've been looking at the papers on this because people have been asking a lot about pregnancy and very concerned about it. There's a reasonable amount of fake news around about it as well, so I've been looking at the scientific literature and what's been published. So here's a paper that got published yesterday, oh, sorry, um, on the 6th of March. The reports of 19 women to date affected by COVID-19. Okay, they delivered 20 babies, 16% of them, these, they had it, 16% were asymptomatic. One of them was admitted to ICU, no maternal deaths have been reported to date. Uh, there's no evidence of vertical transmission to, to date either, and actually when they go back, to look at the previous episodes, like with SARS, there was a very low probability of vertical transmission from mother to fetus as well. So that's reassuring, uh, but I'd like to see more evidence, but there's nothing to date. And there's a, you know, been a lot of pregnant women in China and, and, in, and in Italy who may have been affected. At the moment, we do not know whether this virus exists in breast, breast milk. I haven't found any papers on that, so I, I wouldn't be able to give advice on that at all. But there does seem to be a, a, pre, a possible increase in preterm delivery. So it may well be maternity needs to plan for the fact that people are going to be delivering a little bit earlier if they, if they have COVID-19. And, and for actual care of the patients, we would do the same as we do in other areas like cohorting and, and PPE, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, thank you.